Okay, so again, the probability den we just showed that the probability density, um, which is equal to um, the uh, total wave function, um, the, which contains both the spatial and temporal parts, the, the complex conjugate times itself, so it's the amplitude squared, complex amplitude squared, um, is turns out is, is, is time independent for stationary states, so it's equal to just the um, complex uh, magnitude squared of the of the um, the magnitude squared of the uh, spatial part. Okay, so again, the probability density is independent of time. Um, and now finally, if we plug in the spatial, if we plug in, sorry, not the spatial part, but if we plug in uh, for this constant a, which we now have found uh, to be e, okay, then uh, we we have our uh, and we plug that back into the the spatial part of the Schrodinger equation, then we're left with minus h bar squared over 2m times d squared psi dx squared plus u of x psi of x is equal to e psi of x. So this is a this is the one-dimensional time-independent Schrodinger equation. There's no time dependence here. The time dependence is here. So now once we would find a solution to the time independent part of the wave function, okay, once we found psi of x, then we would multiply it by phi of t to get the total wave function. So for most of this course, the rest of this course, and at least for the next many lectures, uh, several lectures, we're going to basically forget about the time uh, temporal part of the wave function and the temporal part of the Schrodinger equation and we're going to concentrate on time independent potentials um, and so we're going to look be looking at stationary states and since in that case the time um, the, ti the temporal part is always this so in for a stationary state the temporal part of the wave function is always the same it's it's this <laughs> um, then uh, it's so it's not particularly interesting then we um, we can concentrate on just the how the uh, spatial part of the wave function varies for different um, time independent uh, for different time independent uh, uh, potentials. Okay, so now we're essentially done with our for for our discussion, our introduction of the Schrodinger equation, and now we're basically set up to start to solve the Schrodinger equation for particular problems. Uh, that is for particular um, functions, time independent uh, potential energy functions and um, so that's what we're going to be doing in the next um, uh, over the next few lectures.